just before this video starts, um, I I was sick while recording it, and I still am. So if if at times it sounds like I'm kind of just not really into it, or if I sound kind of nasally, um, that's why. But uh, yeah, I guess other than that, my name is SRS Fico, and uh, I hope you enjoy the video. What does being perfect mean? Webster's Dictionary defines it as having no mistakes or flaws, not one. In baseball, a perfect game is where a pitcher, for at least nine innings, starts and finishes a game without allowing even one batter to get on base. In the very long history of the MLB, there have been just 23 of these games, and there hasn't been one in going on 10 years now. The 2-2! Two -two. He got him! 34 years! 119 games! It's finally happened! Now, with all that being said, what if I told you there was a Major League Baseball pitcher that could have had Four perfect games. Four. Meet Mike Mussina. He's a baseball hall of famer and a guy who once successfully refused to be taken out of a game with two outs in the ninth inning. Joe, stay there. No, stay there. Don't take me out. Yeah, I thought that's what he said. He really said, no, stay there, and then struck the last guy out. What a beast. But this video isn't about that. It's about how Mike came oh so close to pitching four separate perfect games in his big league career. We're gonna go through all four in this video, so let's not waste any time, except for a quick plug for our new TikTok. Hey, we made a TikTok, you should go follow it, Woo. Link in description. July 17th, 1992. Mike's pitching for the Baltimore Orioles against the Texas Rangers at Arlington Stadium, which in a little under 30 years is now two stadiums go for the Rangers. While Mussina would go on to have a very long and successful career, 1992 was just his first full season in the big leagues. But on this Friday night in Texas, you'd never know that. Through his first four innings of that night, he faced 12 batters and overpowered all 12 of them, cruising along to start the game. A walk to Ruben Sierra let off the fifth inning and a double two batters later by Kevin Ramirez brought about trouble for Mike. These would be the only two blips of this game for him though. He tore through the Rangers lineup with only these teeny tiny mistakes. Nine innings, one hit, one walk, 10 strikeouts. No errors behind him. The only two stains on that night were a walk on a three to two count, and there's no video of it, so we don't know how close the pitch was. But umpires do make mistakes sometimes. I mean, they're human just like us. One time a guy in the Mexican league swung at a ball and missed completely, and they did not call it as a strike. And the hit Mike gave up was inches away from being a foul ball. It's a game of inches after all, and all mere inches are what spared Mike from a perfect game that night. But guess what? Of the four games that Mike pitched in that we're gonna talk about in this video, this was the first furthest from a perfect game. He got even closer than this three times. More than 99% of pitchers in the history of baseball have never once gotten to say they were close to a perfect game. Mike got this close and better four times. Fast forward almost half a decade to May 30th, 1997, a Friday night in Baltimore. Mike's taking the mound for the Orioles against the Cleveland, now known as Guardians, and there is some thump in their lineup. Manny Ramirez, Jim Tomei, David Justice, and Matt Williams are all in the lineup tonight. That year, they combined for 131 home runs and 396 RBI, so they can hit. Mike didn't seem to care. He set the tone right from the first batter of the game and mowed down Cleveland's lineup. And then he kept doing it. And then he did it some more. He embarrassed one of the best lineups in baseball at the time for like multiple hours. Before you knew it, Mike Mussina took the mound in the ninth inning, three outs away from a perfect game. He faces Tony Fernandez to start the inning and gets him to ground out. Two to go. Sandy Alomar Jr. is now the batter. And oh no. Line to left, base hit. Two outs short of history. The home crowd doesn't seem to care. A standing ovation follows that lasts for over 30 seconds. How did Mike respond to this gut punch of an ending to his run at perfection? He struck out each of the final two batters to end the night. Mike, in near an eerie fashion, almost totally recreated his first line from the first perfect game bid. Nine innings, one hit, 10 strikeouts. But no walks this time. He got even closer than before, this time down to just one blemish on his performance. Oh, and to make matters worse, Mike would take a line drive straight to the head a year after this. Sandy Alomar Jr. hit this ball too, by the way. Sandy Alomar. You genuinely cannot make this up. Baseball is weird. 
Now, one summer after his perfect game bid against Cleveland and two and a half months after taking a shot to the dome, Mike took the mound against the Detroit Tigers in Baltimore. And more methodically than any of these other two preceding games, easily went about his business. In what looked effortless, he coasted through the Tigers lineup. Actually, you know what we haven't once mentioned yet that made Mike's accomplishments all that more impressive? He was doing this during the steroid era. This general time period Musina is pitching in is one where guys are pumping themselves full of performance enhancing drugs and demolishing balls for everyone's entertainment as a result. People would actually show up to games hours early just to watch these behemoths take batting practice because they were cracked on crack. And on this night, Mike has taken a perfect game into the top of the eighth inning. The second time in a year and a half he's done that, where the average competition he's pitching against is generally built like overly muscular cartoon characters. Two batters later and he's one out away from taking a perfect game into the ninth. But then Frank Catalanato rips a double into right field and rips away history from Musina. On that night's Baseball Tonight, they mentioned how unexpected Frank being the hitter to do this was. Instead of putting Catalano on his picture on the Jumbotron, they put up Frank Castillos. That's how unknown this guy is. The first ever image typo. Mike would give up a single in the ninth as well, but he was still only four outs away from the elusive perfect game. Final line, nine innings, two hits, eight strikeouts, no walks. And this time, he finished the game on just 93 pitches. That pace is progress right there. His first near-perfect game from this video, he had 117. So he was much more in the groove as far as dominance this time around. The game itself took just two and a half hours too, 40 minutes shorter than the average 2021 game. Point is, a short game usually means good pitching. Mike Mussina was more than just good that night. And that cut down in pitches across the two similarly nearly perfect games Game outings represents how much Mike had grown as a pitcher from the six years or so between these games. By the end of the 1998 season, Mike had blossomed into a four-time All-Star who had been clutch when the pressure was at its highest. With a career 130 ERA plus to this point, he was about 30% better than the average pitcher around him at preventing runs from scoring against him once you factor in weird stadiums. Mike had an excellent stretch with the Orioles with three near perfect games in that span. But before the 2001 season, Season, he signed a six-year, $88.5 million deal with the New York Yankees. You might have picked up on this happening if you noticed the Yankees jersey on during his first epic gamer moment at the beginning of the video where he somehow bossed his own manager into letting him finish the game. Mike would be great during what would end up being an eight year stint with the Yankees. He'd also build on his reputation as an effective high pressure pitcher in the post seasons too. But I still have yet to deliver on the promise of showing you a fourth near perfect game. Let's just say that if you type anything related to Mike Mussina perfect game into YouTube, the first thing that come up has yet to be discussed here. The best game Mike Mussina would ever pitch in would be on Sunday Night Baseball in 2001 as a New York Yankee. Taking the mound against the Red Sox, who like each other about as much as iDubs and Jinx, that's an old YouTube reference. If you get that one, you're a real one. September 2nd, 2001 would be Mike's masterpiece. On a nationally televised stage, Mike would duel against David Cohn, the last pitcher to that point that had ever thrown a perfect game. Cohn pitched great, going eight and a third innings without allowing a single earned run. He was so good that Musina even said, I hadn't even sat down yet, and I, I don't even remember who I was talking to. I said, I'm gonna throw a no hitter today, and we're not gonna score but Mike was even better. Mike obliterated the Red Sox lineup in that faithful night. He wouldn't give up a single run while picking up a win and striking out 13 batters. He would single-handedly improve the Yankees' chance of winning that game by 79.3%, all on his own if you look at win probability added. The vibes were up in the ninth inning. Cody Bellinger's dad was playing first base now, and the 13th strikeout was the second out of the bottom of the ninth inning. To that point, not a single batter had reached a base against me. 26 up, 26 down. Pitch hitting and standing in between Mike's baseball immortality was Carl Everett. The first pitch of that at bat is strike one. Mike blows a high fastball by him for strike two. He is now one pitch, one pitch away from that perfect game. All he has to do is get one more strike. That's it. He almost gets Everett to swing through a high fastball again on the next pitch. The next pitch is so noteworthy, there's an MLB posted clip on YouTube of it. Here we go. Everett put the ball in play. That one is into left center base hit. He tried it yet again. Messina was just one strike away.
Mike would get the next batter out to complete the game for a shutout. But for the fourth time in his big league career, he couldn't taste that sweet, sweet, perfect game and was one pitch away from it. Today, Mike is in the Hall of Fame for his achievements as a player. So while he didn't actually ever get a perfect game, he didn't let that shake him. And it definitely didn't stop him from having his name go down in history as one of the best to ever pitch. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so goddamn much for watching this video. I I really do appreciate it. Like, I, I love being able to do stuff like this and actually have an audience of people that wants to watch it. So, um, yeah, love you guys. Peace.